Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today, I want to show you where you install your files in Studio One, and I'll also give you some tips on which hard drives to use in order to ensure best performance. We've got a ton of questions about all of these things lately, so hopefully this video is going to help out some of you. So right here on Studio One start page, that's where we can directly enter the preferences and set all of the path locations that we need to set in order to run Studio One perfectly with all of our sound content and plugins and so forth. So to open up the preferences, there's a couple of ways in Studio One. You could either just click here where it says setup on the start page and it gets you straight to the preferences. You can also click here where it says Studio One at the top and then go to the preferences this way. You could also use a keyboard shortcut, which is command and comma on a Mac. That would be control and comma on Windows. Okay, so now that we're in the preferences, we just need to go to the locations tab. And this is where we can set all of the relevant path locations for all of the necessary Studio One data, such as your song projects, your macros, your keyboard shortcuts, but also all of your sample library content, your plugin destinations and so forth. So let's go through each of these columns inside of the locations tab one by one. First of all, we have user data and user data. That means all of your songs, your projects, your shows, your presets, but also keyboard shortcuts, your snapshots of plugin thumbnails, all things of that nature would be stored here within the user data location folder. And you can set this freely yourself, but it would be set in a batch. So if you set your song location, this would also be where all of the necessary preset data and so forth is being set by Studio One. Of course, you can open your songs from any other location if you want to, but your default location would always be the user data location that you set here. Now, depending on what kind of music you make, it might be quite important to set this user data location on one of your fastest hard drives that you have available. Ideally, it would be like an internal drive with plenty hard drive space available, like a solid state drive would be ideal. Uh, the second best choice would be like an external solid state drive just like this one because you might work with sessions that have a ton of audio files that need to be read in real time and if you don't want to load your song for ages then you should probably make sure that these files can be read quickly and the quicker your hard drive is the quicker that can be ensured so that would be my first recommendation the user data location folder is quite critical and you want to dedicate one of your best hard drives available to that specific folder. Okay, then we also have the autosave setting here and that would set the interval at which Studio One is saving your documents automatically in order to save you from any potential crashes that might cause you to lose your work. You can put this all the way down by left click and holding to 30 seconds, which might be a little bit annoying. So I like to set it around one minute, but you can also go all the way up to 10 minutes and longer. Then there's a use cached plugin data on save option here as well. I would not recommend you to tick that unless you're working with huge orchestral templates with tons of virtual instruments that don't change a lot, that are kind of set in stone. Then this can actually make sense and drastically reduce your saving times. But if you don't need this, then you should probably not enable this option because having cached plugin data can also introduce a couple of problems. So with that being said, ask to copy external files when saving a document, that's a quite important option. You might not think so at first, but if you don't have this set, then it can happen that the external samples that you're using are not being saved to your song folder, and maybe they're coming from external hard drive. And as soon as that external hard drive is disconnected, well, suddenly your song project, when it's opening up, cannot find the samples anymore, and you just end up with an orphaned song project. We don't want that. So it's probably best to always ask or have Studio One ask to copy external files when you're saving a document. Then we have the file types. This is not necessarily something you have to mess around with. You can add specific types here that are being detected by Studio One's browser, by the files browser that would be. But in most cases, you can actually leave this untouched. And then the sound sets. This is quite important. This is where you would install all of the sample library content and all the instruments that you would get with Studio One Plus, for example. And you also want to set that on your fastest hard drive available because that can mean a lot of gigabytes of content. And you you want to read and store that as quickly as you possibly can. So once again, for this folder, hard drive speed is key. Then we have the 
instrument library locations. And this is something that I basically never mess with. I don't think this is a standard that has been much explored yet in Studio One. So I don't think you need to do anything in this column. And finally, we have the VST plugins column. This is where you could set the locations for all of your third party plugins that you might want to use in Studio One. Now for this particular location, you can basically use any kind of location that you want. Most plugins are just a couple dozen megabytes or so. So here the hard drive speed would not be as critical as it is in the sound sets and use the data folder. I also want to mention that if you're a Studio One Plus member, you have an amazingly convenient and super simple way to back up and restore all of these preferences that you can customize here. And all you need to do to restore or to back up all of these settings is to go up here to the Studio One menu and then go to backup and restore. From here, it's just gonna take one single click to back up all of your program settings, like your artist profile, your external devices, input and output configurations, your color schemes, plugin thumbnails, you name it. All of this is being backed up with one single click. And when you restore it, you can actually do that selectively. So if you just wanna bring back um, the presets and your program settings, such as the path locations that we discussed today, then you would just tick these boxes and then hit restore and that would be be all you need to do in order to migrate systems with Studio One Plus. So hopefully this clears up a couple of questions that you had about path locations in Studio One. And thank you for watching.